the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Christ is in our midst. Victor Velociner, a Hispanic writer, who is a story in himself, was raised in Southern California. Victor was illiterate because of dyslexia until adulthood. Then a woman in Mexico taught him to read. Ironically, he decided that he wanted to become a great writer, and he asked God to help him. While he worked for 10 years as a laborer digging ditches and cleaning houses, his mind was free to think and dream up characters and plots for his stories. At home, he read voraciously, devouring more than 5,000 books. He memorized favorite openings and analyzed paragraphs and sentences, taking them apart and tried to figure out how, the, how they worked to make the story better. And most important, he started writing himself. He wrote nine novels, 65 short stories, and 10 plays. He sent them all to publishers. All were rejected. One publisher sent him a, a rejection letter that simply said, you are kidding. Incredibly, he was encouraged by that. It meant that at least the publisher had read his submission. Then in 1972, after 260 rejections, Velociner sold his first novel, which was called Macho. He then pub published a nonfiction literary work called Jury, The People vs. Juan Corona, which was an award-winning screenplay, and the screenplay of Gregory Cortez, and the crowning work of his life, the two-part saga of his family that you may have heard of was called Reign of Gold, and that took him 12 years to write. With a lot of hard work, Velociner's part, and on his part, his prayers were answered. He did become a famous writer. Today we hear about another person who had their prayer answered, a man who was paralyzed upon encountering Jesus and then was healed. However, it is interesting to note that unlike Velociner, the man did not say or do anything to be heard by God. He was simply carried by his friends to the house where Jesus was. When his friends arrived to that house, they saw that it was full beyond capacity. Even the doorways were filled with people who wanted to get a glimpse of Jesus. So instead of walking away in dejection, his friends did something out of creativity and persistence. They climbed up onto the roof and lowered the paralyzed man down through the roof into the center of the room at Jesus' feet. One of the most interesting lines in this gospel passage is that Christ, quote-unquote, saw their faith, the faith of the people who brought him, and forgave and healed the paralyzed man. He saw the faith of the people who brought him and healed the paralyzed man. You see, the man's faith was irrelevant in this story. It was the faith of those who brought him that was the important part. I think that this is one of the more beautiful passages in the gospel. It speaks to all of us and reinforces the need to become one as a community and to be as one in faith in prayer, not only for ourselves, but for others around us. It was the faith of those who brought the paralyzed man that warranted the miracle for him. Likewise, it is our combined faith together, our persistence and our perseverance, that will bring miracles not only into our lives, but into the lives of those around us. We have all heard the phrase said by Jesus that where two or three are gathered, there I am also. But it is interesting to note that the, where the faith of two or three are gathered, can also make the difference in someone else's life, even a miraculous difference. Our prayers for one another mean so much, yet sometimes we disregard our prayers, saying that there is nothing else that we can do now except pray, like it is some kind of last resort. I hear that phrase all too often, and many times in the hospital room. However, praying for one another does make a difference. Active faith in God and helping one another just doesn't make a good practicing Christian, but it can make miracles a reality. There is a beautiful quote that I remember reading that says, Our lives are not determined by what happens to us, but how we react to what happens. 
not by what life brings to us, but by the attitude that we bring to life. A positive attitude can cause a change reaction of positive thoughts, events, and outcomes. It is a catalyst, a spark that creates extraordinary results. In today's gospel, we are reminded not to back away from a positive attitude. We are reminded not to lose faith in the face of adversity, to trust in God's grace and our ability to receive it. If we cannot go through the door of opportunity, we need to go through the roof. If we cannot walk across the floor, then we need to rappel down a rope to receive our opportunity. The grace and presence of God is our greatest opportunity as a Christian. However, we cannot have a defeatist attitude, not once, not ever. But we must remain positive, with a positive attitude. We cannot say, it looks too difficult to pass, and I think I am going home. But we must persevere, sparking extraordinary results. If you think about the poor paralyzed man in today's Gospel reading, and think if his friends had just said, it's too difficult to get inside, it's too busy, we can't find a normal way to get in the house, and had walked away, that man would have remained paralyzed. But because of the creativity, persistence, and perseverance of his friends, he was healed and rose and took his bed and went home. You see, no great thing in the history of the world has ever come without struggle creativity and persistence. So what makes us think that the grace of God should be any different? There is a quote that says uh, that persistence is like wrestling a gorilla. You don't quit when you get tired, you quit when the gorilla gets tired. You must never quit trying to find a way to get closer to God. We must find our very own way, our very personal way. And if we cannot get there ourselves, which many times we have difficulties, we must let the faithful people who love us pick up our palette of sin and incapability and let them bring him to us. Their faith, as we know, will also bring God's grace and presence and miraculous deeds into our lives as well. Likewise, we must be persistent in our struggles for one another, not only just for ourselves. We can move mountains as a church united. We can experience and bring miracles into the lives of those around us. But we must be strong of heart and have courage and dare to say, maybe I can get in by another way. Maybe I can get in to see Christ through the roof as those faithful people who brought the paralyzed man did today. Be persistent. Be creative. Be positive and find a way to get in front of Christ, however you can do it. And then you too will be healed and forgiven of your sins as well. Amen.